Welcome to the Oral Health Care Skills Web Series number five of seven, the two toothbrush techniques. I am your facilitator, Mary Lou Vanderhorst from the Regional Geriatric Program Central in Hamilton, Ontario. I would like to welcome the presenter, Kelly Vogel from the Holden Region Health Department in Oakville, Ontario. Hello. And Terry Kirkpatrick, our knowledge broker from the Senior Health Research Transfer Network in Ottawa, Ontario. Hello. We ask that you note several items. First, no photos in this presentation may be copied, but permissions may be requested. Secondly, this is an educational presentation to be used for learning purposes and users of this information are responsible for adaptation of this information to their practice and work environment. We have made every effort to provide you with accurate, evidence-based, and useful information. Finally, we thank Sheridan, Holden Region, and RGTC for their contributions to make possible the Oral Healthcare Skills Web Series. Kelly Vogel will now present Series 5, what is the two toothbrush technique? Well, simply put, it is using two toothbrushes to do the oral care. The handle of one toothbrush is used to prop the mouth open, and the other toothbrush is used to brush the teeth. Why is a technique like this required? Well, we know that doing the oral care is very important to an individual's overall health and that it should be done twice a day. However, some residents present challenging situations in which to do oral care. Some are combative and uncooperative for various reasons. For example, some men may have had a stroke and so they cannot keep their mouth open. Or some people may have different degrees of dementia and therefore cannot consistently cooperate with the caregiver. As a result, they may bite or spit at the caregiver. Because of this, there can be some hesitation or a lack of desire on the part of the caregiver to provide oral care. The result of this, sometimes oral care is not done well or at all. So, help is needed. Therefore, to meet challenges such as these, the two toothbrush technique has been created. One of the great things about this method is that the tools required are minimal. The tools that are listed here are gloves, two toothbrushes, a cleansing agent, and a four by four gauze or disposable cloth. There are more oral care tools that could be used, but in this webinar we are going to focus on three of the main tools. Toothbrushes, gauze or disposable cloth, and cleaning agents. Let's take a detailed look at them. Toothbrushes to brush natural teeth should always, always have soft bristles. The handle should be large, fat, and rubbery. The head should be small, and this allows you to be more thorough with brushing. The cost of using uh, toothbrushes such as these may be a concern. And while it's true these toothbrushes do cost more than other toothbrushes, in the long run, these toothbrushes will not have to be replaced as often as inexpensive toothbrushes. The inexpensive toothbrushes do not last very long and are not good. So, they have to be replaced more often. The effectiveness of toothbrushes, such as what you see in this slide, make the cost well worth it. Toothbrushes should be replaced once they're frayed or dirty or after an illness. Once they're frayed and dirty, they are no longer effective. Disposable cloth is used to cleanse the mouth of debris and liquid. The 4x4 gauze is listed because it's preferred that since it's being used in the mouth, it's something that's disposable. Some homes or facilities prefer to use a washcloth that is not disposable. And if that's the case, that's fine. It's just important to make sure that the cloth that's used is used only for the mouth. As for cleansing agents, 
there are many different brands and flavors that you can choose from. If you are using fluoridated toothpaste, it is important that the resident is able to rinse and spit. If they cannot, then they may swallow or choke on the paste that is used. Therefore, if a caregiver cannot ensure cooperation from the resident, they should not be using toothpaste. So toothpaste should only be used if a resident demonstrates to you that they can and will cooperate to rinse and spit. If a resident is severely physically compromised and therefore cannot rinse and spit, there are products that can be used such as Paravex. This is different from Paradex. Paravex is gel-like in its consistency and is an antibacterial mouth cleansing agent. It is not a mouthwash. It is alcohol free, which is important because alcohol can dry out the oral tissue. It can be used as you would use toothpaste, only requiring a drop on the toothbrush. The taste is very mild, which often appeals to most older adults. When using a cleansing agent like Paravex, there is no need to spit out as foam, the foam produced is very minimal. Foam that is produced from toothpaste can decrease visibility for the caregiver and it can be very uncomfortable for the resident. Due to the composition of Paravex, if a resident was to swallow instead of spitting out, it would not be harmful to them. Paravex is not very abrasive, so it's mild on the oral tissue. This is very useful for people with a dry mouth as it does not cut the oral tissue. The gel-like consistency is ideal in helping move the toothbrush throughout the mouth. Unfortunately, Paravex does not contain fluoride. We know that fluoride is important to oral health, to the oral health of everybody, including those in long-term care homes. So it's important to keep in mind that Paravex should be used for compromised individuals. If an individual can cooperate to rinse and spit, then they should be using fluoridated toothpaste. These pictures provide a visual of how to use the cloth and the toothbrush. The technique that is shown here is called the mop and go technique. While oral care can be done with different methods, we have found that the most effective way to use two toothbrushes is in conjunction with this method. This method of brushing the teeth does not require an individual to spit out or swallow. Most of the debris and saliva is mopped up with um, 4x4 gauze or with a cloth that throughout the procedure, as you can see in the bottom left picture and the picture on the right hand side of the screen. When using a toothbrush that has a large rubbery handle as a prop, the caregiver can feel comfortable to put their fingers in the mouth of the individual, as shown in the bottom left hand picture. This type of toothbrush, one that is large and rubbery, is less likely to slip while your fingers are in the mouth. If uh, an individual was to bite down while your fingers are in there, they would, be, they would be biting on the toothbrush handle instead of the fingers of the caregiver. In addition, if a, resident's bite, if a resident bites down on the brush, you can allow this because the bristles are soft bristles, such as what you see in the top, the picture on the top left side of the screen. Then you can continue on brushing with the second brush until you have a chance to place the handle in the mouth for the purpose of propping. If the resident breaks down on the brush and doesn't let go, you would have to wait as eventually the jaw will relax a bit so that you can get the toothbrush out. Some have tried to use wedging devices. While dental clinics do use these for dental treatment, we do not recommend the use of them because it can be a choking hazard. A toothbrush is the preferred tool to prop the mouth open as you can keep a good grip on it as the caregiver, thus minimizing the chances of choking. 
some have wrapped these six or so tongue depressors with material hospital adhesive to prop the mouth open. And while the caregiver can keep a good grip on tongue depressors, we cannot overlook the fact that if it's in the mouth for an extended period of time, it can become moist due to the saliva. And if the resident wants to clamp down on it, it could become a choking hazard. Using a combination of the two toothbrush technique and mop and go technique, the oral care can be done while the resident is still in bed or in a chair, as shown in these two pictures. However, you'll notice that in both photographs, there are two caregivers. The reason for this is that even though you may use the two toothbrush technique, you may still need the help of another person. Some residents, sometimes their hands are just fidgety and they may be pushing you away. If you have another caregiver to hold their hands, whether it is at the front or they come from behind to hold their hand, then this will allow the other person to be able to efficiently do the oral care. When you have two caregivers, it's important that only one of the caregivers is doing the talking so as not to confuse the resident. Usually that person is the one that is doing the oral care. It is not necessary to use mouthwash routinely if the mouth is healthy and clean. If you choose to use a mouthwash, use a non-alcohol based mouthwash as it's less drying to the oral tissue. However, there are times when mouthwash is recommended by an oral health care professional, and this could be for various reasons. For example, a dentist may prescribe chlorhexidine. Chlorhexidine is used to treat gum disease as it reduces plaque and it fights gingivitis. However, there are some side effects to that. It could, they could have prolonged dental, to prolonged use. They could have dental staining or increased tartar. It can even alter the taste of certain foods. So it's important to use this directed by the dentist. If a resident requires the two toothbrush techniques to be used to do their oral care, this is something that should be documented on the daily oral care plan so that it can be easily referenced by the caregiver. This way, if the caregiver happens to be somebody who doesn't usually take care of that particular person, they will know exactly what needs to be done in order to perform efficient and effective oral care. Daily oral care plans are an effective tool for all people. The tools shown in this webinar can be purchased from various suppliers. These are some of the list of suppliers that are seen in this slide. Some companies have a minimum order, so you may not be able to just simply purchase one or two of them. For pricing on the products seen in this presentation, you'd have to contact the suppliers because we are not in a position to be able to give uh, costs for each item. Please note, too, that the list is only a sample list of companies that provide these products. These products and others like them may also be available through other companies uh, that you may choose to order from. Thank you. These are some additional references that you can access. For printed resources, such as those seen in the slide, like daily oral care plan, they can be downloaded from the Halton website or the HoHo link, the HoHo website. Surgeon has also created pocket docket cards. These cards are for quick references for staff and it contains information on what to do, what should be reported, what they can look for in the mouth. These cards have topics of dementia, dental care, and basic oral care. The card that is entitled Oral Hygiene Dementia 1 refers to the two toothbrush technique. If this is something that you are interested in ordering, please contact Mary Lou Vanderhorst. You can contact her via email, and that information is located on slide number two of this presentation. I would like to thank Kelly Vogel for the Series 5 Two Toothbrush Technique presentation. 
I am your facilitator, Mary Lou Vanderhorst, and along with Kelly Vogel and Terry Kirkpatrick, our knowledge broker, we invite you to watch one of the other six oral health care skills web series. Series 1, Denture Care. Series 2, Tools of the Trade. Series 3, Oral Health Assessment. Series 4, Basic Oral Care. Series 6, Infection Control. Series 7, Oral Hygiene Care Planning. For more information and resources, we recommend that you go to any of the websites listed on pages 2 or 3 of this presentation. <laughs> 